Today we'd like to learn a little bit more about mirrors, reflection, and the images that mirrors can form. So we learn the steps. When light hits a mirror, we draw a perpendicular line called the normal line. We measure the angle of light coming in, and we know that the light will reflect off at the same angle that it came in. The angle of refraction will equal our angle of incident. Okay, so if we had a ray of light coming straight in, hitting the mirror, we know it should bounce straight back out. If the light comes in on, let's say, a 10 degree angle to the normal, it should bounce out at a 10 degree angle to the normal. If it comes in at a 70, de 70 degree angle, it should bounce out at 70 degrees. If your mirrors are not perfectly flat, that's okay. The same rules still apply. So when you take a look at a mirror like this, that's curved, you try to imagine flattening the mirror out. Imagine a flat mirror that's angled the same as the mirror surface is at that point. So at the point where the light hit, our normal line would look something like that and our reflected ray would go something like that. So this angle equals this angle, and the dotted line is perpendicular to the mirror at the spot where the light hit. Same thing on this guy. Try to imagine flattening out your mirror, draw your perpendicular line, and draw your reflected ray at the same angle as the angle of incident. Okay, so something like that. If I ask you which is the reflected ray, I hope you could all quickly identify that it would be letter B. Okay, two types of reflection. One is called diffuse. That would be reflection off of a rough surface. And then specular is reflection off of a flat surface. And I hope that you see that if the rays of light start out parallel, for specular reflection, they will remain parallel. We will get a nice, clean reflection. Off of a rough surface, since each part that gets hit is going to be tilted on a different angle, we're going to have the light reflecting all kinds of different ways. The actual angles you draw them are not important, but the parallel rays of light will diffuse in all different directions. A good example of specular versus diffuse would be when the ice is wet, it's a nice, flat, smooth surface, and you will get reflections of the boards that look very much like the boards themselves. The spots on the ice that have not been covered with a small coating of water are going to be all chopped up from people's ice skates and they are going to produce diffuse reflections. So as the Zamboni passes by, it's going to turn the diffuse reflections into specular reflections. Now you can see a nice reflection in the net everywhere that has been coated with a smooth layer of water. The smoother the water, the better the reflection's going to be. The rougher the water, the more diffuse it's going to look. If you have smooth uh, glass windows on the side of a building, the reflection will be pretty specular. Okay, today we'd like to focus on locating images. So when the cat sees its reflection in the mirror, we would like to know about the properties of that reflected image. So locating images, main idea for today. So it looks like there are two candles on this table, but in reality, we have one real candle and one reflected candle. We would like to be able to determine the properties of that reflected image. Okay, so here's how you're gonna attack it. Draw the real candle, draw the mirror, draw your eyeball. Realize that light is coming out of the candle's tip in all different directions. Only one direction is going to strike the mirror and bounce into your eye. Another one will come off the bottom of the candle, strike the mirror, and bounce into your eye. Again, only those two directions are going to work. 
any other direction, the light's going to hit the mirror and bounce away from your eye or nowhere near your eye. Once you have done this and you see these two rays entering your eye, realize that your eye is going to trace those rays of light backward in a continuous straight line and your eye is going to perceive a candle at a certain distance behind the piece of glass. So this is the distance to the object. This is the distance to the actual image. The height of the image and the height of the object. For a flat mirror, the image should be the same size as the object and the distance to the image should be the same distance as we have from the object. So the image appears the same distance back and the same height as the original object. Realize that there is not really any light reaching this spot. This is not a real image. Putting something back here to try to capture that light and turn it into some kind of actual image would not work. This is an imaginary image that is only formed because the brain of the person viewing it thinks that the light traveled to them in a perfectly straight line which means that they think that the object was actually behind the mirror, when in reality, the object was in front of the mirror. Okay, so when this person is looking in a mirror, they are going to see their mirror image the same distance behind the mirror as they are in front of the mirror. When they bring their hand close to the mirror, the image will also be close to the mirror. And it turns out that it was not an image, it was actually another person, but a mirror actually looks like there is another person of the same size and the same distance away from the mirror as you are. If we curve our mirrors, we can produce all kinds of different types of shapes. So let's see how that works. We're going to start by curving the mirror surface inward. This is called a concave mirror. Now when we fire the hockey pucks at the mirror, we see they each bounce at a different angle because the curvature is constantly putting the boards at a different angle. And you could see that even though it seems like they bounce randomly, they all happen to go through a certain point and that point is called the focal point. So light would do this exact same thing off of a concave mirror and depending on the curvature of the mirror determines where that focal point is going to be. If we imagine taking this mirror and making a circle out of it, this X represents the radius of that circle. The focal point will occur halfway to the radius of the circle. All right, so if you draw yourself an example, Again, show the rays of light coming in parallel. Show them all bouncing off in such a way that they meet at the focal point. This type of mirror is used in headlights and flashlights. And then we have another type of mirror where the mirror surface is now curved the other way. This is called convex. And now when it hits, the hockey pucks will deflect away from that principal axis. And this is known as a diverging mirror. The other type was converging. And if you trace all of the hockey puck paths backwards, you will get an imaginary, an imaginary focal point. Again, halfway to the radius or the center of that circle from which the mirror has been cut. All right, so this is what diverging looks like. Tomorrow, we're going to try and use these ideas to locate the images from a converging and a diverging mirror.